Okay, back again, and the uh, I forgot to mention this is the scan on the uh, my AS Rock machine. Call it the AS Rock because it uh, has an AS Rock motherboard. It's a Athlon dual core, two gigahertz. I think it has three gig of RAM. No, it only has two gig of RAM. Um, so anyway. Um, Status done on fixing issues, and it's still uh, uh, it might, might be a different cab file, but that's what's showing up in there. So uh, I put my camera up on boxes to on my keyboard tray to keep it from moving so much, and uh, still I can't. That's actually just exactly as far back <coughs> as I can get on my keyboard tray. It's like just get that. Uh, menu in the window. I suppose I could drag it down some, couldn't I? Make it more in the center, just in case that phone decides to move a little bit. Um, it's crooked, I know that. Uh, shows up to be a lot more crooked than you would think, and that's, uh, that's just how unlevel things are. I mean, uh, the keyboard tray, from the keyboard tray up to the top of the desk there, and the monitor, you know, sitting on it. I never tried it just like this before, so I hadn't noticed it. Can't really read that green text. I don't know if I can read it at all. It's just all those. Oh, it does tell you where things were. Okay. Admin app data. Okay. Windows so and so. Everything search program that I like to use. Search your desktop, search all your files, face recognition software that I haven't ever used yet. I've, I've yet to learn how to set it up. Yet to think you even have to compile it. It's really unusual to see something like that that you have to compile for Windows, but some of it you do. I have several of them on in my downloads folder that I was wanting to try out and try to learn how to use. It's not just install and run you know it's real set. you got to set it up glary software malware hunter well that's probably just a, a, a mal you know a trojan uh, signature for glary to find it filezilla oh that's unexpected so when you only thing you know you can really figure uh, now i can really figure after all these years Messing with Windows viruses since '98 uh, is that they have crawled around the system and got in these other files that weren't infected before. So you got to go that far over, and you still can't see. When you got these long file addresses, you can't. I'm having to hold my magnifying glass up there to. Read it. I doubt that's helping the camera any. It's for me. Um, I can't read it still yet. Can't you know? It's I can't hold it still enough, and it uh, it's not a big enough. I'm closing one eye and looking through it. Anyway, um, it's here and there and everywhere. And uh, that's the other thing is this thing defaults to a really small text. They should default. Most of them default to something you can read at least. I might be able to go in here. This is I can notice this is XFCE desktop. You can't. Yeah, maybe you can see that. I might be able to go into the settings and I guess I could try accessibility real quick. Some t in in Mate, which is just like Genome 2, it's real quick to change. Uh, you know your font sizes and all that stuff. X F C E. Some of it you have to actually go in and edit some file, some text file somewhere. No, nope, there's not even anything in there about text size, screen size. Of course, you can change the resolution, make it less, then it gets more fuzzy. But one of the really, really cool thing about Linux, most Linux distros in themselves, especially Fedora, is what I'm most familiar with. Uh, is that you can change the font size, style, icons, fonts. Let's see, yeah. 
let's just go ahead and make it bigger try 14 that'd be about right for me now sometimes it doesn't take effect in the applications that are already running no way to you know you can't right click and refresh or anything so usually and I see in mate uh, most applications that are already running will just go ahead and go follow right along with what you set to but it didn't so this application may have to be set within itself to either it may be set for its own font sizes and independent of your desktop font sizes too so that could be the other thing so anyway that didn't help so there they are I'm gonna take them all out um, let's see what have I scan this thing with see that mos I just saw that mosquito that's been biting me all evening I want to kill that thing so bad I always see it for a brief second and then it's gone. That's the best I've seen it so far. Usually I just see something tiny black spot moving. There it goes again. Watch me try to slap it and knock my camera over. I don't want to do that. But, uh, okay, I've done ESET. I did a vast boot time scan and I did malware bytes in, in uh, safe mode. But you really, uh, Malwarebots is going to like it, especially for malware. But uh, and sometimes when you run all your virus scanners and they, they might delete the file, that they'll get everything except for some certain malwares that get in. Or it was that way. It's getting less and less that way because more antivirus software is including malware cleaners. Sometimes you would uh, have all the viruses gone, but you still have the malware in your web browser or something. So... Uh, Oh, and I also have that, uh, one of the things I saw in this scan, uh, I forgot what the name of it was already. Uh, there's another malware uh, application I have on this system uh, that actually is running blank anyway there's another one that's that's uh, not just a malware but also has an antivirus in it and it didn't squawk with the vast they didn't fight each other so I, I've been having them both run but then neither one of them went off when I started having this problem of my Firefox just opening up and going to a website all by itself which the website wasn't even there anymore it evidently had been taken down because what I found out it was was a website that uh, a, a, a group that was trying to do click fraud and it was trying to just come advertisements uh, that will automatically open up in, in your web browser and it said it would work in any web browser uh, and in any operating system because it works in the web browsers and this was in Windows 7 and luckily it hasn't happened in, in, in any of my you know it didn't since it could work in a Linux system luckily it hasn't gotten into any of my other systems my Linux systems and I haven't seen it in the other Windows systems that were infected with Trojans and stuff. But that's the crazy thing. Uh, this on this uh, this scan here, the other scans didn't show up any sure full blown, things that look like full blown Trojans. These do. That, the names sound like it to me. I don't go into the trouble to research every file and all that junk because there's so much of it I just don't want to waste the time doing it if it's I'll just trust the software I mean well I haven't been completely I've been kind of judging in the last until I started having trouble with all three of these Windows 7 systems I, I thought you know that I know that I've had these programs on my systems download them you know on my backup server and I've had them for quite a while and they haven't ever caused trouble before so some of them for several years you know uh, some of the things they were saying well this has this or that usually it had something to do with some kind of adware and I'm like well of course it's a lot of the anything that runs on Windows that you get for free almost all of it has some kind of adware in it so I left them alone well that could have been my mistake because now three of them are just crawling with uh, Trojans and stuff so it was more than just adware. Uh, it looks like I have a combination of Trojans and adware. And uh, I think I saw a couple other things. I, I'm, I'm between these three different systems my laptop, this uh, desktop, and uh, oh, yeah, my Lenovo i5. I, I broke the uh, Windows 7. It was a brand new install. Well, that actually came from the laptop because I was using that Windows 
file transfer and it copied copied all that crap over from the laptop. I thought the laptop was clean. It, I hadn't used Windows hardly at all in a while and it was clean there the last time I saw it and I didn't you know go in and scan it before I started using that software and that software when it was copying over a file I've asked one off and said, Oh, we stopped a bad thing, you know. And so then I knew that there was probably more on the laptop and that I had just copied a bunch of crap to my <coughs> <coughs> other desk, other little desktop, my old Novo. So um, then I got to thinking. Well, if when I went to scanning them, got to thinking. Well, I wonder if there's anything in this um, uh, AS Rock. And uh, but it was fine. It wasn't giving me any trouble. Running pretty good. And uh, so. Uh, and I had begun using the systems more because uh, I got these cam these phones with cameras, and I've been making videos, and I've been back copying my videos off of the phones onto the desktops as a place just for a place to put them, you know, just for space. And uh, that's when I got into all my trouble with Windows again. That's one reason. That's one, this is right here why I don't use Windows. All this malware and virus crap. That and the pain in the butt with the with the freeware junk junk software in the freeware all that stuff you don't have to deal with that with open source and Linux so uh, so let's hit finish issues have been successfully resolved infected items 20 scanning speed files per second 24 so that's what it says 20 things that it uh, and I told it to delete them so 20 files have been deleted what were they in? Well, I'm not quite sure. Didn't I kind of looked the best I could see that. Um, didn't see anything saying it was in you know Windows System, uh, Windows or Windows Sys 32 or any of that junk. Um, it's kind of odd how this is set up. It uh, says registration information has a key which it put in there for me automatically. Type trial 30 days. But it keeps saying it, it has these like you know with uh, suggestions uh, that a lot of applications have when it opens up. And if you look through there, it'll say for personal use you can use it as long as you like. But I guess after it says after 30 days you would have to get a new key and give me your email address or something. But see it says set new key right there. But it doesn't seem to be counting down because I know I've had this on my USB stick longer than 30 days. So. It seems like that this key will just keep. Uh, I'm guessing it'll keep working as long as you've got it on a live setup like this, you know. And if you had it installed on a system, then it would probably count down. Is what I'm thinking. That's a new one to me. I found it with. Uh, I guess I found it. Oh, I, it was in Yummy. Yummy, the uh, Windows Linux system live boot builder. Uh, that's what I made this USB stick with and it was in there and, and it automatically you know just clicked on it and it downloaded it for me and that's one and uh, a Cronus yeah Cronus and e sets I got that way that's how come out I'm not real familiar with them but I've used Yummy for years and so you know anything you find in there is probably going to be pretty decent and it has uh, this is a Linux system that it's running on but it's called the Windows virus scanner and call it a rescue system and uh, of course you can uh, on the yummy if you've never seen it then you can uh, it's a good way for you to if you want to start playing with Linux and learning about it it's a good way to it's really just for making live USB sticks it, it warns you on there that you can't you usually can't install from the yummy built systems they've made a especially a fedora I don't think you can install from Sardu's another one I use. And I don't know if you can install from that either anymore with Fedora. You can with the Bane, I believe. But um, anyway, it's because of the way their their installers are set up now. They've been changing them in the last few years, but uh, used to work in the past. I guess it just made it harder for the the to be done from a uh, from a multi boot. A live system that's what they're not you know that's kind of what they're saying they're not going into details I mean you could I'm sure you could go read it maybe even on their sites but but I had last uh, ever since Fedora 20 or so I've had to just put Fedora the Fedora install ISO on 
my USB stick or a DVD uh, or a CD if it's small enough, depending on which one you're using. Uh, I have to put it on there by itself with the software that Fedora suggests. And uh, actually, you don't even put it on there with. Uh, there was one that was for making a putting an ISO on uh, a, a CD or a USB, and they said don't use that anymore. Now you just use the. Uh, I don't think it's on here. Yeah, it's not. But it's similar to Gparted. Gparted is on here. Gparted. It's really cool. This is good for uh, fixing your. I'm going to hit exit on that. That uh, virus scanner. Getting sidetracked in here. But Gparted, see that shows your partitions. There's only the. Should be more than one on there. That's my uh, USB sticks. It's just FAT32. 1.86 gigabyte. This is the hard drive on the system. It should be showing. I thought you had to have at least 200 megabytes of, in, of a system partition to install Windows 7. But it doesn't have this on this one. My other, my laptop and my Lenovo, I had to get it to work. I don't know. I don't remember now. So anyway, uh, I don't know if it's in here, but... Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess this up. Put it on there just in case I slip. Sometimes my fingers slip when I'm clicking around on stuff. Yeah, it, it, this is anyway for. Of course, you don't want to put. If you, you don't want to play with one of these applications, you need to learn before you start using them if you don't already know. But uh, the one that comes with Fedora has a few other features. You can uh, restore a partition, and so what you do is you get your download your Fedora ISO and then just click on restore partition go point to that ISO and it restores it to your USB stick of course you have to have enough space for it and everything And but it, in the process it wipes it reformats that USB stick so uh, that's something you gotta consider of course that's what I use these for so I reformat them all the time but it'll, you'll end up with uh, kind of a mixed two partitions on there and one of them will be XT4 I think it may keep a smaller FAT32, I can't remember how it does it now, or it has two XT4s or something, but anyway, then it'll uh, boot up, give you a live system, and uh, unless it's just install only, depends on what you download, but the ones I usually download give me a live system and then I install from there, so, don't know why I got into that, but that brings me around to uh, for instance, now that I'm beginning to wonder that there might actually be some infected files on my backup server, I'd like to scan it with more than just all I have that, that I can scan it with is Clam AV, and I can do that, you know, from the system that I run it in, or I can boot to anything I want, uh, Fedora, and scan it with Clam AV. But I'd like to be able to use other scanners, just like I've seen, you know, different ones find different things. Uh, but I would have to build my own because I've never seen a Fedora rescue system that I can remember, Fedora based. If there is, I, I need to find it. Uh, anyway, f because Fedora uses uh, LVMs, logical volume management, and Debane or any of these others, of which, the, which most of these rescue systems are built on, can't mount LVMs for, by default. And uh, it's pretty tricky to do it. You have to run commands in the command line, and I'm I don't ever remember how to do it, you know, manually. And I'm so spoiled by Fedora just doing it all for me. So what I would like is a, a rescue system built on Fedora. And then uh, with several virus, I'd like to have like five or <laughs> at least five virus scanners on there, different ones on it. I guess I have to build my own and uh, take a lot of time. That's why I haven't done it. And then I can uh, scan, uh, it'll, you know, it should pretty well auto mount any Linux type, any Linux or uh, NTFS or file system. Well, you might have to set it up to do that. Generally, Fedora will mount e ext 2 3, 4, uh, LVMs and all that just automatically. NTFS, you usually have to manually do that. Or usually, you just go into your file manager, whatever file manager you have, and uh, there's your scan logs. Uh, this is, say, this one here whatever it is, uh, Thunar, I like Thunar, and you just click on that drive on this left side and uh, uh, say like this is the USB stick I got here, and it would just mount it 
uh, automatically most of the time. Maybe you have to put in your root password. But uh, now I don't know how to get back where I was. There we go. No. I was thinking, I was going to see if I could read that log. Okay, there we go. I tried to open this up earlier. It doesn't have an application on the system that recognizes it to uh, open it up. Foxit Reader, I believe, will just open up PDFs and stuff. Uh, let's try it and see. Nope, that's what I thought. I did look through the, uh, there's a kind of a manual, docs documentation that comes with this. Close that. There it is. Oh, well somewhere I found it. I don't remember where or how I found it. Oh, that's it. Just says a clonus. Oh, that's the program. Anyway, somewhere when I was in the beginning there, I close it before it starts scanning again. Uh, I found, the, oh, okay, I'm going to open up again. I know what. I'm going nuts here. Help. I must have clicked on help. Yeah, here it is. I exited it. Okay, so in the help, um, I went through, it's a PDF, and it, that's why they have a PDF viewer, that, that program I was talking, showing you on there that wouldn't open up a log file, which is really just a text file. Uh, anyway, that'll tell you everything you need to know. And Cronus is one of the very few that updates the virus definitions and start scanning automatically which is cool but it threw me off I was like well wait a minute is virus definitions been updated because it usually takes five minutes on a lot of applications uh, but it didn't on the Cronus so uh, real quick and uh, so it does do that so uh, boy I must be too tired um, going, I, I'm losing my train of thought so, um, the scan logs, oh, I saw in there it listed the applications on this rescue system, on the system itself. It's just all about this whole system. It's not just about the antivirus. And uh, I saw that it had Vim, I think. So I could say open with other application. I could say custom command. Since I don't know where everything is on there, it would be real hard to find it. Vim is actually a command line text editor. I would have to open it up in the command line and then try to open this up. I'm not that interested in it. Uh, yeah, they should include like you know, K right or something. You know, something like say the X, the whatever's the default X F C E G U I text. Let's see. Let's see if I can try it this way. Foxit reader, yeah. A lot of times, see, these are only GUI applications that show up in here. So those were command line applications. So app systems can often have command line applications that are not listed in your graphic, you know, your start menu, if you want to call it that. Yeah, see, there's not very many applications in it. If I hadn't read that little manual, I wouldn't have realized how many other things. There's all kinds of things. There's network tools and all kinds of command line tools. Let's see. How can you get into a terminal here? <coughs> right click. One thing about Thunar, if it's if it's set up that way, you can right click in a folder and say open terminal here. It's not set <coughs> this one's not set up that <coughs> way. <coughs> <coughs> It's an add-on for Thunard. You have to add to it. And it's not in this one. So, you know, that kind of hangs things up. And I don't even see the system. You don't even have a quick way to get to a terminal window. There it is. I just can't see. Okay, boy, that text is small. Vim not found. I must be remembering it wrong. Well, this video is already too long, but anyway, um, so I'm going to stop. I could, uh, I think I will do this. I can open this up on my other computer so much easier.
copy, multi boot, and I'm just going to put it right there on the main if I can. And I guess I'm not don't have write permissions. Sometimes that happens. It depends on how the uh, copy send to multi boot. See if it does that. Failed. Yeah. Can't can't do it. It's reset set and read only. So you know you could do something like mail recipient, but no application. Of course, I knew that. You could go the other thing. What you can do, and I have done that a lot, is uh, you can say leave that open. Go to Firefox and log into uh, my. Uh, I could log into my. Uh, what's that? It's about Mozilla. Log into my uh, Gmail and email it to myself. But I don't really want to do that either, so I'm not going to worry about it. <coughs> so, go down here and shut this bad boy off. Just shut it down. I'm done for the night with that. I think I'm going to go watch a movie. Okay, well, that was a quick shutdown. All right, this is done, and that is my scan with the uh, Cronus rescue system fire scanner on the uh, AS Rock desktop system.